Microplastics are super scary and they're kind of sneakily everywhere. And you should particularly watch them out for these three types of consumer products. And hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Taro and this is my YouTube channel, The Spore, where I share ideas and thoughts and things I've learned along the way in life. Uh, if you wonder the weird name and accent, it's because I'm from Finland originally. I live now in Austin, Texas with my American wife and three kids. And uh, among the other things, I write books about mushrooms. I built a company, nine figure company called Four Sigmatic. And I've spent a lot of time in health and wellness. And part of this journey of spending a lot of time in health and wellness, I've had the luxury of meeting the smartest, greatest minds in the space but also spending a lot of time, my work time, thinking about problems in health and wellness. And there are a few things that I think are very underrepresented in health and wellness that are kind of like modern day issues that we've not yet physically adapted to, but also we are normal traditions and, and habits are not adjusted to modern day life. One of them is like staring at the screen. Our eyes are not adapted to stare at the screen for eight hours a day. So we have a lot of probably eye issues coming up in the future. We're also sitting a lot. I'm sitting right now. So our bodies, our backs and, and pains and aches and pains that we get from sitting, these are kind of like the new forms of smoking, staring at the screen and sitting. But a third thing that people don't mention is microplastics. Now people experts, official experts will say microplastics are everywhere and but you don't have to worry about them. But I would say, there's more and more proof coming out that you should actually worry about them. Maybe in small dosages, they're not an issue, but the amount that we're accumulating year after year is becoming an issue. For example, in male fertility, going down, testosterone going down, there's a bunch of other scary stuff. And I bet in the next 10, 20 years, we'll come up with a lot of evidence to show that besides, similarly to sitting and staring at the screen, microplastics are an issue. And they're more common in certain types of consumer products. And in this video, I'm gonna walk through a few things that what you can do to maybe not fully remove microplastics from your life, but definitely reduce them a lot. When we talk about microplastics, we could go into the science, what type of plastics, these polymers and how the structures are and how they break down. It gets very technical. I'm very into this. Um, there's another video about microremediation that I'm currently working on. It might be published before or after this video, but um, it's something that I'm very passionate about. When we talk about this topic, the one thing that keeps coming up is water and water bottles. And that makes sense because we consume a lot of water and more and more people are consuming water from plastic water bottles. And those water bottles and the types of plastics they use combined particularly with sunlight and a lot of heat ends up often being a lot of microplastics. And instead you can have either reusable water bottles. A lot of people have these, but they don't use them. Or you could buy even today um, aluminum water bottles like this company, there's many others, and you could buy better quality water in store instead of buying a plastic water bottle. And then you can reuse this, which is what I'm doing. I, I keep reusing these bottles. And that's great. I think you should think about your water just because you consume so much of it every day and it's such a big part of our body is water. But I think there are sneaky three areas that people don't think about. Most people know about the issue with microplastics or the risk with water. And that again is important. But there are other ways how microplastics get into our body that we might not be aware of. The first one is clothing. Actually, after food waste, the biggest area of of wastage in our society is clothing. And it's become trendy for eco reasons to use things like recycled plastic bottles to make clothing. There's a lot of expensive premium high-end brands that use these eco materials, eco. And those end up actually creating a lot of microplastics and breaking down these polymers into structures that then get absorbed through our skin. And as you might know from taking a magnesium path or even if you ever get to bathe in beer, that's a thing, you will get drunk because things absorb through our skin. We just don't acknowledge it. Plastics is one of them. So clothing is a huge issue. I recommend buying natural materials, anywhere from hemp and wool and other things. And those are unlikely to have and avoid these modern day eco materials, particularly any if they mention reusing plastic to make shoes or jackets. I would be skeptical. The second area that microplastics can get in is fish. 
Now, fish has other issues too, heavy metals, mercury, this and that. And fish can be great. I'm from Finland, we eat a lot of salmon. We're salmon people. But that being said, fishes um, get now microplastics in the ocean. And there's increasing evidence of this, which is pretty scary. And usually the bigger the fish, these compounds, including heavy metals, kind of compound. So if you like eating fish, I would probably limit it to a few times a week, but also eating smaller fish like sardines, herrings, us Nordic people love herrings, you know? But avoiding large fish or eating them less often is probably helpful. It, there's also hopefully innovation coming into the plastics in oceans, but that's a whole nother topic. But just know that if you eat fish, there's an increase in probability that they've consumed these microplastics from our oceans. The third one, which is kind of sneaky, is tea bags. I have a real beef with tea and tea bags, and you should too. Tea, among with water and coffee, are one of the most consumed beverages in the world. And similar to water, a lot of people drink tea daily, and maybe less so in the US, but still a massive, massive thing, and people drink it every day. And it's mostly consumed, not loose leaf, but tea bags, because it's convenient. And people think, hey, it's just a tea bag, what's in it? But there are plastics in it, and I mentioned with the water is heat and some from the sun combined with the plastic is not a good combo. So in this case, you're pouring hot water on the tea bag. And while there's amazing things in tea, Camellia sinensis is one of the most studied health foods in the world. So drinking tea, particularly green tea, but all kinds of tea is incredibly well studied and healthy for you. And often now teas combine other good things in them. So they put other herbs and mushrooms into tea products, making them even better. But if you do pour and use it in a tea bag and pour hot water on it, you are solely exposing yourself to more microplastics, which to me is sus. This is one of the reasons why Four Sigmatic has been working with uh, Whole Foods and launching a new line of multi-serve teas. These are functional teas. Functional teas are exploding in the tea space. You might usually buy tea when you have a sore throat or seasonal allergies or you can't sleep, so you go buy some sleepy time. So tea is commonly used as also as an as a herbal medicine. So it's not new to the tea category, but they're getting better and better. So fortifying teas with different kinds of herbs, mushrooms, and functional ingredients is getting more common. And within that category, mushrooms are becoming the number one most fastest growing part of functional teas. So functional teas are biggest part of tea category growth and mushroom teas are, funny enough, no pun intended, mushroom teas are the biggest part of the growth of that functional category. So in partnership with Whole Foods, initially we're launching these products. We have a few different kinds, mood, happy gut, calm, think. Uh, most of them are caffeine free. The think does have a little bit of caffeine from black tea. Most of them are herbal teas, so they're caffeine-free, sugar-free, and they're multi serve so there's no tea bag, and you get the ad additional benefits of herbs and mushrooms. So if you're shopping at Whole Foods, go check them out. They're right now on the shelves and soon with other retailers too over time. Um, but every Whole Foods store in the country, in the tea section, go find the Four Sigmatic functional teas. But even if you're not, even if you don't shop at Whole Foods, you're not interested in trying those products, I highly recommend ditching the tea bags and going for the loose leaf teas Yes, it's a little bit more work, but you're gonna get better quality, better taste, and honestly, probably also better bang for your buck because the tea bag does cost some money too. Now, there's many other things you could do to avoid microplastics in your life and in your diet, but these are things that I think affect a lot of us. A lot of people wear these synthetic clothing materials, workout clothes, leggings and spandex and whatnot, eat fish and drink tea. And these are, I think, big areas. So when something is, some, you wanna change your life, think about the big buckets, things that more you consume something, the more bigger impact it has on your life. So start with the areas that you do a lot and upgrade those, elevate those. You probably not have a huge trade-off in cost or quality, you might even go up, maybe a little bit of convenience or a new habit that you have to change. But in general, these are pretty easy swaps for a better choice. And limiting the exposure to microplastics, I think, will pay dividends similarly as walking more than sitting and not staring the screen all day long. If this video was helpful, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, or leave a comment below. And if you disagree, you can leave a comment. I'm not going to be offended. Um, hopefully see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.